Oh no! I fucked it up already. God almighty. On um, Facebook, it's going to say, uh, I wonder if I can change it. It's going to say that it's Rankin's Records. It's not Rankin's Records. It's Coffee and Memes. It's 10 a.m. It's two minutes past 10. It's Friday. It's the 19th of Yuli. Yuli. Nineteen. Yuli. Fucking I'm here. Snips is here. He's still got his glasses on. His glasses are rock solid. There's, they're not coming off. They're held on with freaking wire. That's all right. His little dope uh, hoodie. That's fine. No problems there. See ya. Oh, yes. could, have, could have been worse. Guys, hi. How are you? What's going on? Who wants to get banned? That's going to be the uh, the new... Um... No, it's not a fucking pre-record. It's not a pre-record. I'm not a communist. This is, uh, I'm fed up with these conspiracy theories, these absolutely outrageous uh, lies and fake news being spread about me. Uh, This is not a proof code. This is a goddamn live show. I am as live as it gets. I'm as real as it gets. I'm the realest ever, okay? I don't know whether what the scale of realness is. What's like, I guess it goes from like fake news to the realest ever. And I'm the realest ever, okay? Snips, do you agree? I fucking... Gee, I'm fed up with him this morning. He's been in a mood. He's been sulking. He's hung over. He went out last night, went to Soho, went to GAY, doing God knows what. It's fine, but, I mean, if he's going to come in, like... Like, don't come in and sulk. If you're going to come... Like, either come in and do your job or don't come in, all right? I've had it. I've had it. Lobsters. Christ. Anyway, guys, hi. I'm I'm here to entertain. Uh, it's not a pre-record. I swear to God, damn God, like you're all banned. Okay, right. Who's the ringleader here? Who started this? It will be Frisk or Bunga. I uh, can tell you. Yep, they're both banned. Okay, Frisk he's banned. Okay, uh, put user in timeout. Banned. Uh, but Jake Bunga, you're also banned. Okay, uh, that's two bannings to kick the show off, ladies and gentlemen. It's coffee and memes. Steady job and a couple extra potatoes. That's all I want. You're getting on. You're pushing 30, Slubby. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Oh, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy. And that's funny and it's, it's, it's kind of cool and it's interesting and it's edgy and all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you. And if you don't play that out, you actually fail. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Memes on Threshold.fm on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. If you're watching on Facebook, I've got freaking news for you. This is Coffee and Memes. This is live. It's as real as it gets. It is not Rankings Records, as I'm afraid uh, it says. Um, that was yesterday. Fuck yesterday. Yesterday can suck my little white dick. Okay, guys. Um, right, look, news. There's all manner of stuff uh, today. A lot of nonsense from the Metro. A lot of very triggering nonsense. I've actually had to leave some of it out um, because, you know, because I'm such a snowflake these days. Um, not a communist. Def- 100% snowflake confirmed. Um, I got uh, triggered by a woman who'd made a chair to stop man spreading, if you could imagine such a thing. Um, that was very triggering. I found that extremely. Uh, the idea that I should have my legs together for any sort of period of time, of course, very triggering. Um, there was some other stuff. Um, one, a whole article, like it maybe was a thousand words, maybe more, maybe 1,500 words in the Metro about why we should stop the um, toxicity of weight loss surrounding masturbation. Who's wanking to burn calories? I mean, that's quite a good idea, actually. I mean, you might as well, like, exercise needs to be fun, otherwise no one's going to want to do it. Why not whack yourself slim? That actually seems like a great idea. 
Why why would weight loss be toxic? Like we're getting in shape. Why being why is being healthy toxic now? What the hell's going on? I'm so triggered. I'm so, I can't take it. I'm just yeah, oh, unbelievable. Anyway, look, there is some there is some reasonable news. Can I change this live to say what it is actually supposed to say or probably not? God, look, Facebook uh, look, Facebook you've suffered through worse than simply one video of mine. Uh, being uh, uh, labelled wrong. Uh, how, many, how many people are even watching on Facebook? None. Probably two. Just Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg's dad. And uh, Can I change this? Oh, line? no. You shut up, you stupid buffoon. Look at you. Look at the state of you. Balding at the top there. S- silly boy's t-shirt on. Unfinished tattoos. Hung over, clearly. Got some dumb panda weird thing with a baby's face on behind him. What an absolute clown. Turn that mug off. Um, anyway, look, actual news. What have we got? Porn sites are collecting your most intimate secrets and incognito mode won't protect you. Are you going to protect me, Jasper Hamill? Are you? Would you? Is that the sort of thing you'd do? Would you lay down your life to protect my porn, my, my porn secrets? Would you? Probably not. Elon Musk unveils Neuralink brain implant and vows it won't take over your mind. Nope, absolutely not. Nope, won't take over the mind. Nope, nope, won't, won't be controlling. Nope, no, nope, I, I don't think so. Just, I just walk. No, nope. it's got like a permit for a pit, big pit, and just dug a big pit. Big pit full of people's minds. Yep, no, just uh, Neuralink just plugs in, you know, increases bandwidth to the brain. It's uh, probably fine, probably won't be a problem. Um, does Instagram's new no likes model signal the death of the influencer? This is Jeff Parsons giving analysis. This is um, got a sort of special tag on it uh, for the Metro, like analysis, as if people are like, oh, I wonder what the Metro's analysis on stuff is. I, I'd really like to get really like to get their analysis on a few things. I like the analysis articles. They're really good where they sort of analyze things. You know, they do such a good job of it. Okay, now, Instagram's revealed it's trial- trialling what things would look like without a like next to each likes next to each post. This is Instagram 2.0, folks. Well, it's being trialled in Australia, Brazil, Canada, Ireland, Italy, Japan, New Zealand. Um, there's been a lot of chat about whether or not it will change. Uh, this change will signal the death of the influencer. Why? Why would it? I mean, you still people are presumably still like stuff or... Uh, you still people still views. Th- oh, forget, I'm not even bothering with this. Not even gonna bother. Not even bothering. Um, woman plan. This is more like it. Woman plans wedding with her favourite chandelier, uh, Lumiere. Uh, so that's a bit fun. Uh, we always like a bit of object uh, objectum sexual. Um, that's good. New parent taxi app charges your kids in chores every time you give them a lift. Why do we need apps now to to parent? Is that so? What you're not able to you're not able to have that conversation with your children without you're not able to just have conversations with the children without it being an app form. Like you can't just go. Look, tell you what, look, I'll pick you up from the disco at ten o'clock. Yep, but you got you got to tidy your room. You got to tidy your room, and you got to do the hoovering. Uh, no, I won't. Oh, I'm, I won't. I refuse. Okay. Well, what about if we do it through an app? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Fuck's sake. Um, shoe throwers wise, look, we do need to crown some sort of shoe thrower of the week here. There's a few bits to get through. We've got this another impact bit, which I think is certainly worth uh, getting into. I'm going to play that Simplicity by Eclectics. Again, that was a lovely bit of gear. Actually, I'm going to play that now. Um, there's that Joe Ford bit as well, which was nice. And No Fear Trace Remix by Warp Phase, spelt with a two. Uh, let's have the Simplicity bit then. It's a nice bit. Ooh, easing it in. Just easing in on a Friday morning. Just leaning in gently. Oh, lovely. Look, everyone's turned on each other in the chat. As soon as a few bands start going around, people are like, oh, ban him. No, he started it. Don't ban me. Oh, I'm banning you all.
reflected on your show. Sorry, are, are the women in the chat referring to men as sausages? Shining that is disgraceful behaviour. Like so I will not tolerate such sexism. You're both banned. <laughs> just like to spell uh, just squash any more rumors i'm not ai this is not a pre-record i'm not communist this is not some sort of ai communism just just getting that out there okay it's live uh, if i was ai uh, could i do this i don't know Also, in regards to the Facebook live stream, face, Facebook are throttling the stream so hard. I think it only really wants you to do one a week uh, that I'm just going to stop stop streaming to Facebook soon. We'll do it all through uh, YouTube and, and Threshold. Because fuck the Zuck as well. Send me a Turing test then. Go on, yeah? If you're so hard, yeah? Send me a Turing test. I'll fucking eat it for breakfast. myself open to prove there's no wires in there. Fine, I'll do it. Someone get me a, someone get me a blade. There's some very blunt scissors over there somewhere. I'll do it. I'll do it just to prove it. You 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 don't you don't try and test me. I'll get Bezos to peer into your bedroom through Alexa. Take pictures of your bum, I'll put them online. I'll do it. Yeah, I'll bloody do it. build some special code into the new Threshold app whenever that bloody world comes out that peers into you while you're whacking. Yeah, peers in on you, criticises your technique. It's like, oh, don't hold it there, hold it further up. Why are you holding it so low down to the base? You're not getting any purchase at the end. Jesus, man, that, would, that would be rubbish, wouldn't it? Like some sort of app that cr critiqued, your, critiqued your wanking technique. No. Uh, it's not about that. It ain't about that. Okay, guys, look, porn. We all watch it. What's what, what's to be done about it? Porn sites are collecting your most intimate secrets, and incognito mode won't protect you. Cool. Okay. Uh, well, what is going to protect me, Jasper Hamill? Please tell me. I throw myself at your mercy. 
Porn sites are collecting data about their users' sexual preferences and passing this highly selective information onto companies who cannot necessarily be trusted with the information. Says who? Says you, Jasper Hamill. Eh? Uh, that's the warning from researchers who analysed 22,000 pornography websites to find that 93% leak users' data to a third party. The team said marginalised groups are at particular risk from their data leaks, especially if they want to keep details of their sexuality private. The information gathered by porn sites create numerous opportunities for violence, blackmail and discrimination and constitute a clear and present danger to those who consume online pornography. What I'm confused about is... Well, I don't know. I mean, like, who's putting their info in? Are the, I mean, it's it's... It's just like normal browsing data. What could they do with normal browsing data? I don't know. I mean, is this for like people who create, actually like create accounts on uh, on sites that are like weird sites or something? Like, I don't know, like figging sites or whatever. Like if you sign up and you put in like all your actual accurate information and your credit card details. Don't you feel like you've... S- you accept a certain amount of risk when you put your actual details into something like that. Wouldn't you just sign up with fake info? I don't know. I'm no expert. The information gathered by porn sites create numerous opportunities. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and turning on incognito mode won't protect you because information gathered from other sources online could be matched with the porn data to identify people who log on to X-rated site. That would be uh, sites. Jasper? Hackers could use this information to blackmail or revenge porn. Uh, This is also, there is also a chance it could be used in the future if society became more progressive and tyrants began to target people based on their sexuality. Right, tyrants like you, Jasper Hamill. If you got into charge, if you got in charge, if Jasper Hamill got in charge, well, first thing he'd do is eliminate sharks. He hates sharks for no good reason. And he would almost certainly have them all put to death. So that would be the fir- first things first. Then he would probably have Elyon arrested. Uh, arrested for, and then he would, I don't know, maybe keep him as some sort of weird pet. That seems likely. And I could imagine Jasper Hamill drunk on power, drunk on porn users' data, and just frivolously throwing it about the place, having deep fakes of other, making deep fake revenge porn of other lab Bible journalists, Hartley Parkinson, uh, like having, you know, uh, J- Jeff Parsons shot on his chest or something like that. Send that round the office. Mm. Uh, it, it, it doesn't bear thinking about. Uh, private access to online porn as in, uh, porn as important. Uh, uh, private access to online porn as important to a queer, feminist, sex positive politics of gender and sexuality and central to community binding and free and safe sexual expression there's a few words missing there that would string that into a coherent sentence we can try again though private access to online porn as important to a queer feminist sex positive gen politics of gender and sexuality and central to community building and free and safe sexual expression the team added okay sort of word salad isn't it um the academics said the extent to which gender and sexual interests could be interfered from site URLs demonstrates, oh, inferred from site URLs demonstrates the troubling potential for the tackling and disciplining of sexual interests labeled non normative. All right, okay. Uh, they found that almost half of all porn websites have web addresses which expose or strongly suggest that the site content includes or targets one of the more specific gender or sexual identities or orientations. Yeah, imagine a website actually advertising in the domain name what's, what was on the website. Like, you know, a gay porn site may well call itself, like, hotgaypornvideos.com. It's unlikely to call itself, like, bigyellowstorage.com, isn't it? It's, you know, like the, the clues in the title. Here. They, hi- they highlighted bestialitylovers.com, right? Bestiality is illegal. Bestiality porn is illegal. Don't be, don't be like, oh, we, shouldn't be, we shouldn't be kink-shaming people. No, no, that's like, animal porn is not, that's, that's not okay. Like, it, <laughs> boy, I, what? Boyfuckmomtube.com 
and hdgayfuck.com. Yeah, you get, like hdgayfuck.com are not going to get very much traffic if they call themselves like nicepicturesofdogs.com. Are they? Like, what the hell do you want people to do? <laughs> like, um, yes, these are particularly revealing of their visitors' sexual interests. Yeah, people shouldn't be going to bestialitylovers.com, guys. What are we doing here? We're trying to normalise bestiality. Christ. The team added the singularity of porn data and the characteristics of typical porn websites lack security means this leakiness poses a unique and elevated threat. Use a VPN, guys. Like, if you're looking at narky porn, be smart. Go and use a decent VPN. <sighs> We have argued everyone is at risk when such data is accessible without users' consent, and thus can potentially be leveraged against them in a malicious by malicious agents acting on moralistic claims of normative gender or sexuality. Um, this study looks like it's been done by someone who is probably studying bloody gender studies at university or something, doesn't it? Uh, anyway, guys, look. Again, more coffee and memes, safety information. Trust and safety information. If you're going to look at narky porn, then just, you know, use a VPN. Okay, guys, I think uh, that's, that's the only advice I'm prepared to offer on the subject. Elon Musk unveils Neuralink brain implant and vows it won't take over your mind. There he is. He's like, no, nope. uh, will it take over your mind? Uh, nope, nope, won't do. Sh- uh, shouldn't do. Probably, probably won't do. Probably, probably won't control you. <laughs> um, go to Mars. Gonna go to Mars and dig a big pit on Mars. Uh, wo- will it take over the mind? Uh, no, no, probably not. Probably won't. Probably won't. Elon Musk is perhaps the most popular tech billionaire on the planet, and he doesn't appear to have the slight tinge. He doesn't appear to have the slight tinge of evil characteristics that some of his Silicon Valley competitors have. So we're hoping the Tesla boss is telling the truth when he says the new brain implant from his company Neuralink is not designed to take over your mind. (laughs) Elon Elon can take over my mind whenever he wants. Is that it? Wow. That looks pretty cool. Um, Last night, the tech mogul unveiled new trends thinner than a human hair which can read people's thoughts. Oh, shit. His scientists have also invented a robot which can implant these threads into human brains and hopes the device will help paralyze people who cannot move their limbs or communicate using spoken words. Musk believes the rise of machines poses an existential threat to humanity and hopes this technology will allow us to achieve a symbiosis with artificial intelligence. (sighs) Bet you sweet ass he does. Um... This is crucial for our survival because even in the best case scenario, our species will be outmatched by super smart computers. I think these super smart computers are probably a little way off. I think that's, you you know, basing that on my wide knowledge of computing and AI, I'd say they're a bit of a way off. I think it's going to be important at a civilization wide scale, Musk said during the Neuralink launch event. Even under a benign AI we will be left behind. With a high bandwidth brain machine interface, we will have the option to go along for the ride. He said the technology is a long way off being mastered. He added, it's not going to, su- it's not going to be suddenly Neuralink will have the neural lace and start taking over people's brain. The tech has already been tested on a monkey, Elon revealed. We definitely need to address the elephant in the room. The monkey in the room, he joked. Ha ha. A monkey has been able to control the computer with its brain. Just FYI. (laughs) I want him to bring back Harambe. Come on, if there's a way that... If anyone can do it, he can do it. It's hoped Neuralink will be tested on humans suffering serious unmet uh, medical diseases in 2020. Currently, the process of fitting the thread involves drilling drilling holes in people's skulls. But it's hoped the surgery will become less invasive as the tech develops. (laughs) Yeah, good. Um, yep, no, we will drill a hole, just a uh, hole in the skull. Yep, yep, just dig a big pit. Just big pit in your head, uh, put a neural link in there. Yep, can control your brain. Yep, can can, can make you walk again. Yep, big pit. Uh, this is, this, <laughs> this has a very good purpose, uh, cure disease. Yep, ultimately, uh, secure humanity's future. Yep, just uh, digging a pit to secure the future. Yep, okay, thanks guys. Um, well, I'm excited. 
I'm excited to see the direction it goes. I, w- I want to see him wear one first. Before I get one, I want him to have one. I think that's fair, isn't it? Come on, buddy. You know, you, 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 taste, you taste, the, taste the poison chalice first. Go on, have a little sip. Go on, get in there. Go on, stick that bad boy in your brain. You drill the hole yourself, Elion. Come on. Right, have some more bits. Let's have distance by impact. This is a bit of a duvet remover. Jimmy, why do you live in the Valley of the Incest? What's going on? <laughs> Saying one lady I know, married to a non-related family member, told me that in the hospital where she had her baby, they asked what relation her husband was to her. <laughs> we live in strange times. Distance by impact. Right, yeah. 
Um, just, just, okay, fine. Um, woman plans wedding to her favourite chandelier. Lumiere. Lumiere. Oh, God, she's getting right up close to it. Okay, now, okay let's have a look at this mad cow. What's she, what's she on about? Ugh! Ugh! So it makes me feel gross. I'm Amanda Liberty. I'm in love with chandeliers, and I'm making a commitment to my favourite one, Lumiere. Love you. Ooh. I first fell in love with chandeliers three years ago when I walked into an antique shop and saw Luna over there looking at me and I just had to have her. Giving, it, giving you the eye. From then, my love for them has blossomed into something totally amazing and something I never realised or imagined could ever happen to me. Mm. When I first saw Lumiere, she was in Germany, on eBay in Germany. And it was the shape of her arms that first drew me to her. Yeah, she's just fair. Everything about as far as chandeliers so go. Now, I, over my three years, and, and before that, I've seen thousands, tens of thousands of chandeliers, and not one of them comes close to her in terms of how they look. You know, I've not found another one that looks like her. Yeah, she's, yeah, she's fair. Yeah, buff. She's clearly jacked, but it obviously goes to the gym. Yeah, my love is easily comparable to somebody else who is really in love. The, the only thing that's different is that she's an object. You know, I like to shower her with affection, <laughs> and I like to give her gifts and stuff. Well, God bless her uh, and everything. She seems very happy, and that's uh, that's good. Um, Amanda Liberty loves chandeliers. Not as a fancy household decoration. We mean she's in love with chandeliers. And she's currently in a romantic relationship. In romantic relationships with several chandeliers. Oh, slag. Uh, and plans to marry her favourite. Good lord. A chandelier called Lumiere. Um, you might remember Amanda as the woman who has a tattoo of her beloved sh uh, chandelier. Or the one who sleeps with a chandelier called Jewel in her bed. Or as the person who changed her name by deed pole during a relationship with the Statue of Liberty. Yes, of course. She married the, married the Statue of Liberty. So that's why she's called Amanda Liberty. So is she going to divorce the Statue of Liberty before marrying the, sh the chandelier? Because I don't, I don't know how does the Statue of Liberty feel about this. Last time we checked in on Amanda, she had popped the question to one of the chandeliers she shares a relationship with. Lumiere. She's now starting to plan the wedding. Amanda won't be able to marry Lumiere officially, as she's a chandelier. But by holding a ceremony and sharing it with, sharing it widely, Amanda, who identifies as objectum sexual, hopes she will legitimise her attraction to chandeliers and other inanimate objects. Amanda said, I'm determined to have this commitment ceremony to prove that I'm here for Lumiere and that my love is going to last. Well, you probably said that last time when you married the Statue of Liberty. Yet here we are. I restore the chandeliers in my spare time so I can continue to interest people so they can continue to interest people as they like to be the centre of attention. Sure, typical chandeliers. That's what that's what they like and it's the energy I get from them. I'm not sure what dress I'll wear and I will invite the closest to us. I'll also be buying matching wedding rings for Lumi Lu Lumiere and myself. I know a lot of people think my attraction to chandeliers is strange but I'm not crazy. I've been polishing Lumiere most nights to ensure she looks her best. That's nice. Uh, it's always uh, <laughs> always good to polish your fiancé the night before the wedding. Amanda fell in love with Lumiere after struggling to maintain a long-distance relationship with Libby, otherwise known as the Statue of Liberty. Amanda brought the 91-year-old German chandelier from eBay and uh, reassembled it, becoming romantic in the process. Amanda said... Lumiere was originally born in Germany uh, 91 years ago and is uh, 28 inches wide. Well, Amanda, I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. Uh, Lumiere actually collaborated with the Nazis. Really, Lumiere should not be getting married to you. Lumiere should be at The Hague being tried for war crimes. Okay, sorry to have to break that to you. Uh, she first caught my eye when I stumbled across her on eBay. I have no idea. I had no idea she was soon to be my wife. I spent 400 quid shipping her over from Europe. I felt it would be helping her leave the country because she was a wanted war criminal. Okay? Right, so now you're collaborating as well, are you, Amanda? You're collaborating with the Nazis. 
this is a disgrace. I spent 400 years shipping her over from Europe, and it really was love at first sight. As soon as I'd seen her, I, uh, I couldn't stop thinking about her and how beautiful she was. Uh, she has such a beautiful shape, and I could feel really amazing energy coming from her. Oh, there's no doubt she's absolutely using with Big Dick Energy, but she still collaborated with the Nazis. I knew there and then she had to be mine. The relationship isn't monogamous, but thankfully Amanda is free to continue relationships with multiple chandeliers without any jealousy. Well, does Lumiere have any other relationships, or is it, is it just you slinging it about? You know, all I... You know... Each, each, look, each their own, but all I'm saying is that when you find the right chandelier, I really do think that you should be a one chandelier woman. Call me a traditionalist, you know, call me conservative, but I just think, you know, if you're saying that you love her as much as you do, why not monogamy? She takes a small chandelier, Jewel, to bed with her and says that all her chandeliers understand that she loves them all for their different personalities. Okay. Lumiere is too big to take to bed with me. All right, well, that's fat shaming a chandelier for a start. But she doesn't mind when I spend time with others. Some objectum sexual people believe that their partners talk to them, but I know that Lumiere communicates differently. She doesn't exist or live in the way that we do. They give off energy and show me how they are feeling. Okay. Well, uh, wedding planning commences now after Amanda popped the question back on Valentine's Day 2016. She hopes that by speaking out about her bond with Lumiere, she normalises relationships with objects. Well, best of luck on that one. I, 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 th I think you might have a rocky road ahead in terms of um, normalising. I think there is a little bit of a way to go. Not quite sure that society, even the real most liberal progressive pockets of society, are quite ready for it. I mean, are, are, you, are you looking to get a letter on the end of LGBTQ? Like, are you going to get, do you want to know on there for object, objectum sexual? Why not? Let's get them all. Let's, let's, let's have a hundred or so letters on there. Why not? Uh, I want others to see how many chandeliers make me and how much, how happy they make me and how much they have enriched my life. I'm doing this in the hopes that people will understand our love. And if not understand, maybe they could at least accept it. That's, you know, it's fair enough. I mean, yes, accept it. Fine. Go to do, do, you know, we're, you know, we're all friends here. We're not hurting anyone by entering into a relationship with them. I am simply just following my heart. God bless her. I hope she's happy. I hope she's having a good old fucking time. Um, three spam comments. Uh, and then Fanny Ch uh, Chmela says, uh, she's not hurting anyone. If that makes her happy, let her go for it. Yep. Fine. Like. Yeah. God bless her. And God bless Robin Hood. What else have we got? Oh, yes, right. Uh, Gimp news. Gimp terrorising Somerset Town, beaten up by MMA fighter. It really has been a fun fun week for this and uh, how it how it's developed. A mixed martial arts MMA fighter, take that with a pinch of salt, uh, has claimed that he beat up a man dressed in a gimp suit who has been terrorising a town in Somerset. Boxing and Muay Thai devotee Cameron Graham said that he was drunk when he saw the sight of a man dressed in a rubber onesie lying on the floor of a car park uh, in Calverham, Somerset. When the man tried to get up, Cameron claims to have struck him back down. Uh, here he is. Um, he sort of has the looks of... like he's trying to do an impression of Brad Pitt's character out of Snatch. Um, good hat. Also useful for miladying. Um, possibly lop... just take the beard down a notch to just the neck and you'd be um you'd be in business when the fighter returned home he told his mum that like, this is the sort of thing where like if i don't know if i got into any sort of silly situation like this the fact that i've you know trained some jujitsu and done about three mma classes in the night he'd probably get spun like that the <laughs> mma fighter high ranking like no 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 when the fighter returned home, he told his mum, who did not believe him. Neither did his friends. So he started to think that the effects of the heavy session had made him imagine it. Right? Okay. He doesn't say when it happened. He is making it up. But then, when subsequent reports, reports of the grunting gimp recently surfaced, he started to think that it may have been right all along. Cameron told the Daily Star, <laughs> I was just walking along and there was a bloke lying on the ground in a car park next to his field. He was wearing a felt gimp suit, latex and everything. He tried to get up, but I was having none of it. Why? What? 
I had kicked him in the face and then to the stomach and got off. Hold on a second. You you just you kicked a man lying on the ground. You kicked a downed opponent. You kicked him in the face and then the stomach. Why? He doesn't appear to have done anything at the time. You've just basically come out of a pub drunk and kicked someone who was already lying on the ground. Pathetic. When people dismissed his claims, he started to doubt himself, saying that his head had been all over the place following a recent breakup. Okay, so what's happened here? You've, you're angry. You're angry because of your breakup. You're angry and drunk, and you've just kicked someone who's lying on the ground. Like, who's the gimp here? Yeah? I ended up convincing myself that it didn't happen. He said, <laughs> they all said it was rubbish and he's just drunk and that. And to be fair, I'd had a few beers in that. I was out of my tree. Oh, no, I wasn't out of my tree. But Cameron is now insistent that he is the same person reported to have chased the woman through the Somerset village. Hey, plot twist, I reckon he's the gimp. He's in the gimp suit, and now he's doing the old switcheroo, where it's like, oh, yeah, no, I saw him, yeah. Oh, you're helping out with police investigations, are you now? Always question those that attempt to help out with police investigations. Look, it's called the Huntley effect. It, uh, it, it's a thing. <sighs> Um, he continued, but now, as it turns out, the bloke I kicked looks like the bloke in the photo. Uh, they're both tubby. You, you, you would know, like, there are only so many people dressed up in gimp suits, unless there, there's loads of them running them up. It's like, I don't know, is that the same gimp suit? Not sure. He added, people think it's funny, but it's not. It's making people scared to let their kids play, which isn't good. The revelation comes after a man wearing a gimp suit chased a terrified 23-year-old woman through a village while he was grunting and breathing heavily. Uh, I believe this is now just copy and pasted. Look, you've got this bloody tweet from Avon and Somerset Police with the bloody stock image of some handcuffs. Arrest me. It's not Grand Theft Auto. It's real life. God, look at this prize prick. Prize fighter, more like prize bellend. Um, yeah. Okay, well, you know, God bless him, I guess. Uh, this is that Trace remix of No Fear by Warp Phase, spelt with a two. I think it's a contender. The levels engaged, we turn in the page of flipping the script in the Sisypheus kids. Yeah, hold on, actually. Plot twist, yeah. Maybe the guy the guy was grunting, yeah, because he's been kicked and beaten up by this idiot, and he was probably maybe he wasn't chasing people, maybe he was trying to get help. You know, that's it's you know, if you look at it from that side, maybe he was running away from this arsehole. Kick the shit out of him. Maybe he's just doing his polite, just quietly doing his gimpy business on the floor of a car park, just having a bit of gimpy fun. This geezer comes out of the pub, pissed up and drunk, obviously out out for a ruck, as you know, very low end fighters can be. You know, the better you get at fighting, the less likely you are ever to get into a fight. He's come out drunk, had an argument with his missus. This guy's just quietly doing his gimpy business on a car park floor, just having a bit of a gimp sesh, whatever. And this loon's fucking kicked the shit out of him. And so gimpy boys run away, to, like, he's given up his gimpy business to then run and try and seek help. And, you know, it's being spun that he's chasing people. He's not. He's trying to get help, but he's got the gimp mask on, so he can't... <laughs> Look, yeah, and I can see it from the woman's point of view. Like, she doesn't know about, like, that he was just politely doing his gimpy business before getting kicked in by this bloody half wet, this fucking white belt. It's come out of a pub, drunk. Kicked. Uh, right, anyway, well, look, back back to this uh, Traced remix. With the greatest hits, time traveling with Icarus wings, we get it in. No fear, no retreat, no time for the week is good. We love it when they all get shook. Bye bye to the fly by night. You know the type when the going gets tough, they're the first to alight.
Bomber. People are saying Impact, she throw of the week. The track is called Distance. Or do you reckon this? A decision must be made. No Fair Trace Remix, MC Copper Pond the Mic uh, by Warp Phase, spelt with a two. Uh, so yeah, what do you want, that for Sheath Rower of the Week or do you want the uh, impact bit? Guys, let me know. The build has no opinion on it. Victor says, press L for Lobster Dance. That seems like a reasonable thing to do, doesn't it? Um, there, we go. there we go. Lovely stuff. Um, guys... I think we've got time for one more, then we've got time for another bit. Um, Oklahoma man driving stolen vehicle caught with rattlesnake, uranium, whiskey, and firearm. Uh, that's uh, quite a collection you got there, buddy boy. That is, <laughs> that's that's quite the arsenal. Um, I believe there's a news report on it here. Uh, you're gonna load up ABC News. Caught on camera today that caught our attention. Officers out in Oklahoma pulled over a pickup truck for having an expired tag. A body cam was rolling as officers discovered the driver not only had a gun, the truck he was driving was stolen, and in the back he had a canister of radioactive powered uranium and a rattlesnake. That sucker is huge. <laughs> yeah, officers also found an open bottle of whiskey. Both the driver and the passenger are now under arrest. I, want, I need more information. What's, what is his explanation? For, where did he get the uranium from? How has he got uranium? Where did, where's that come from? What was he doing with it? Uh, yes, yes, okay, so he was driving with expired plates. Look, if you're riding dirty, how many more t Look, I'm fed up with this, yeah? The amount of stuff that I have to continually repeat myself on. One, the fresher the egg, the better the poach, okay? 
fed up with having to explain that. This, I'm also fed up with having to explain. If you're going to be riding dirty, yeah, don't have your car be, have like tail lights out, brake lights out, expired, road tax, you know, stolen. Don't be doing, look, if you're transporting uranium from somewhere, don't do it in a stolen motor. Are you dense? God. He, he looks confused, man. He, what's going on here? Anyway, look, expired license uh, was a convicted felon in in possession of a firearm. Uh, it, the vehicle, a Ford Explorer, was impounded because it did not have insurance. It was later discovered that the vehicle had been stolen. Yeah, no shit. Okay, so look, um, as officers who continued to search the vehicle, they spotted an open bottle of Kentucky Deluxe whiskey near a firearm. The sergeant said. Then they discovered a container of yellowish powder that was labelled uranium. Oh, okay. Well, is it uranium? Or was it just labelled uranium? Um, Jennings of Logan County told officers that he had the uranium because he recently purchased a Geiger counter to test metals and the chemical element came with the purchase. He joked with officers uh, that he was trying to create a super snake. Okay, M maybe he was. Uh, Jennings was arrested on charges of possession of a stolen vehicle, transporting an open container of liquor, operating a vehicle with a suspended license, and a failure to carry a security verification form, the sergeant said. So it's not a... F he was arrested on charges of possession of... Oh, his missus was arrested on charges of possession of a firearm after a former felony conviction. A snake was taken from the scene and euthanized. Oh, and the uranium was inspected. The uranium did not result in charges because Jennings was in possession of a legal amount. There's a legal amount of uranium you can have. Should, didn't you, you not need a license or something for it? Jennings was also within his rights to have the snake. Why do they put it down then? Oh, he's going to be in the clink for a while though, isn't he? In the state of Oklahoma, there are certain seasons when you can, where you can hunt rattlesnakes. Gibbs said, this happens to be one of those, this just happens to be one of those seasons. <laughs> right. Gibbs said that it was his first time he'd encountered a discovery like this and that his department had received calls from other municipalities regarding how they handled it. Uh, because if we run into it, Gibbs said, it's going to be possible that someone else runs into it. Really? <sighs> well, I, I, really, I, just, I really want to know what the, tr what the truth is behind here. There's so many questions and so few answers. Like, was he really trying to make a super snake? That sounds fun. Like, that sounds like a fun afternoon. You're driving around in a stolen motor, probably all whacked off of Scooby Snacks, and you're trying to make a super snake. You know, how's your life got to that point? You know, when you were 15, sat in class, looking dreamily out of the window, did you ever consider that there might be a time, years in the future, where you banged up because you've been riding dirty you know, with a firearm, a rattlesnake, some uranium, your best gal by your side, you ride or die by your side. You're trying to, you're out drunk and high at the same time, trying to trying to create a super snake for no good reason. Think, yeah, that's a situation I could see myself ending up in. Probably not. Probably didn't think about that. His parents probably didn't see that as being the way he would go either. Maybe they did. I don't know. He looks a bit super snakey, kind of. Uh, he's tall, tall boy. What's that? Six, 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 five? No, six, four. Are they inches? Yeah, uh, yeah, six, six, two and a half. Yep. <sighs> well, I wish him the best of luck. I hope he gets rehabilitated uh, to, to whatever extent that's possible. I hope he makes a super snake. If he's got, le look, if he had the, the snake legally, the uranium legally, I don't know what the legalities of trying to create a super snake are. I just, I just, it's just a shame that he was right. He, he, you know, he f really just balls up on the rest of it, like ride, ride, riding in a stolen car. It's a shame because we might have been able to see that super snake. We don't know how far he could have got. This is like, you know, Tesla having died without, you know, finishing his his best inventions. Had he had he lived another ten years, maybe would have got wireless transmission of energy, long distance. Who knows? You know, maybe if Matey here hadn't been driving a stolen car, we might all be riding to work on gigantic super snakes. Something to think about, isn't it? Something to think about. Maybe old Elon Musk could get his neural link in there, download some of the some of the plans for the super snake. I think it would be reasonable to test it on, on the criminally insane first. <laughs> 
That's the sort of thing. That's that's sort of, that's that's how a horror movie starts, isn't it? Well, we've designed this Neuralink thing so we can read people's thoughts. Why don't we test it on the criminally insane? Ma! <laughs> Before you know it, super snakes everywhere. It's a fucking disaster. I can see it going that way. I think it would be all right. Um, are people questioning my pronunciation of Elion? What? <laughs> Come on. Come on, guys. Um, the, they got the uranium from the Libyans. Oh, wait, no, that's Back to the Future. Oh, yeah. Um, what's going on? Guys, um, look, it's the end of the show. It's the end of the week. It's the end of the world as we know it. But everything will probably be fine because most things usually are. Uh, thank you, everyone that's supporting on Patreon, that you are genuinely helping. Well, if you weren't, I wouldn't be here. And so everyone that's not, say thank you to everyone that is because, uh, you know, otherwise I'd just I'd probably fallen into uh, a spiral of drink and drugs and, you know, sex with floozies. But no, I'm here. I'm on the straight and narrow because of you fine folk. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, we're nearly at 100 people on uh, Patreon, so that's f- fucking amazing. Uh, when we do, yeah, as uh, I've said, that uh, we'll, we'll start Whiskey and Memes, which will be... Basically, you know, just uh, probably basically just be coffee memes, but with me drunk seems like a reasonable proposition. So, and another three of you head on over to Patreon, head to, go to threshold.fm, go to donate, and all the information you could possibly want is there. And uh, we'll get that show on the road, guys. Thanks, Greg Cornford, Oliver Hooper, Tom Ryan, Reese Moss, and Squidgy Beats Parsons, Paulie Hutton. Kieran R, Michael Gazierski, Matty Tompkins, Dave Long, Joel Potter, Carl Murphy, Sam Howard, Tony J, Richard Patterson, Tom Cam, Stephen Harris, Matthew Bullard, Jerome Van Thunderbutt, Mike Pye, Lillian Sub, Richard Franks, Thomas Hall, Cho Ryder, uh, Andrew Heischerbeck, John Finnison, BDR Crew, Peter Blasford, Austin Grief Cooper, Gunny Lightville, Ra- uh, James Parry, Hender by Tendo, Lady Squiffington, Liam the Menace, Underwood, Dan Fucking Morris, Guy with no STDs, A's, Ames MC, Josh Williams, Rob Humphrey, Shibby T, Coco Shiva, Dan Elton, Tyron Wilmore, Mr. Pope, Dark Progressive, Sign Trans, Actually Superior, Drum and Bass, Nicholas Lossie, Chris Brakes, The Bill, Carissa Bartherson, Odin Bates, Lee Fuller, D, Daniel Jemby, Flaxis, Matt Wright, Grant Sullivan, Tom Robson, Robinson, uh, Dad Smasher, Connor Smythe, Kevin Kaiser, Chris Shaw, Mr. Happy the German Trans, Overlord of DB, Ranking Makes Up Lifting Vocal Side Trans, and the Ernest Cosmic Wharf, Give me a call, Tall in the Motor Pool, but don't let you meet life. Nick Brock, Mustang Philly, Sean Simpson, Robin Carr, Sam House, you Dan, Sarah Hunt, The Hitch Mouse, El Tate, Will A, Ben Virgo, Dan Tweed, Lupe Salazar, Big Watch, My Hill, My Mighty Danny, Nick Fleming, Carl Lewis. Oh, I'm getting younger and younger as I do it. Uh, Gordon and Liz, Carl Williams, Tom Skipper, unfortunately, George DC, Anthony Sharp, and Claudia Lusmere. Guys, thanks so much for listening this week. I'll be back on Monday. I'll be off on Tuesday while I move, and then I'll be back on Wednesday. But yeah, I'll see you on Monday at uh, fucking 10 a.m., yeah? Have a good weekend. Go out, have fun, stay safe, you know, use protection or not. You know, depends on the situation, doesn't it? If you're trying for a kid, don't use protection. It's my advice. You know, if you're trying for a kid, of like, don't, you know, don't pull out. You know, don't do it out the bum. You know, you got to really be in there. You got to leave it in. You've got, you got to be a leaving dude for once. You know, just try it. Just try it out, man. Um, guys, I'll see you on Monday. I love you.